Sukuna Kaisen is no more? The king is getting humbled by the most dangerous duo in the series. The two main protagonists. Yuji is attacking the soul, reducing Sukuna's curse energy and control over Megami's body, whilst Yuta has just hit him with a Uno reverse card. Sukuna's own power, please. Now I must begin with stating, chapter 250 was absolute fire. It reveals the gamble the heroes made can attain victory. However, before we glaze them a bit too hard, let's explain what's unfolded from the very beginning. Well, firstly, Sukuna's total curse energy right now is on the same level as Yuta. In chapter 225, it was Yuta who scaled Sukuna's curse energy reserves, which are more than double his own, meaning his fight with Gojo nerfed him to a huge degree. On top of that, Sukuna admits that his reverse curse technique is slow and he can't use his domain right now. Yay! This is orgasmic news to Gojo fans as he Thanks finally no, got no. some respect put, put respect on his on name head. and the efforts he made weren't totally useless after all. That's what I'm talking about. But this does prove Sukuna was holding back, I'm just saying. <laughs> However, it's time for Gojo's students to shine, as Yuta's domain is completely broken. This expansion has an infinite number of swords, each with a different curse technique imbued into it. There's no limit to the number of katana that can be stored, but only he can utilize these techniques and they are all one use only. On top of that, it also allows Yuta to choose any one of his copy techniques to be imbued with the show hit effect making his domain one of the most powerful in the entire series. Right now, the short hit effect is Jacob's Ladder which Angel used. In chapter 221, we learn it has the power to destroy any curse bathed in the light, including special grade curse objects such as Ryum and Sukuna. Therefore, it's able to destroy the fingers Megami had eaten, something even Gojo couldn't do. However, Yuta doesn't know which sword will reveal which technique until he uses it. For example, he made Sukuna admit his disadvantage using Uru's Sky Manipulation Curse Technique. Hence, he theorizes that if there are any powers that Sukuna has not seen, there's a chance to take him by surprise. And so, Jump Kaisen begins. Now remember that Sukuna is stuck using Hollow Wicker Basket. He can't use the Reality Cutting Slash either, which is why Yuta splits Rika into multiple mini Shikigami, just like the ancient sorcerer Drav whom he fought in the Sendai Colony. While Sukuna tries to deal with them, Yuji comes in with the good old left right good night. However, even though the king manages to block them, his soul starts shaking again. Now, if you're wondering what is happening, our boy is finally living his main character potential, fam. Unlike, uh, someone. <laughs> Okay, we should have laughed at him because Yuji is dedicating his whole life to save him. His new soul punches attack the very border between the souls of Megami and Sukuna. What the f*** does that even mean? Well, basically, since Yuji shared his body with the king, he unlocked the unique power of seeing the contours of a person's soul just like Mahito. Therefore, he is able to directly hit them. With that, he's trying to wake up Megami. Wake but this is more important than you think because if Megami does wake up and tries to take control, he can help from the inside, just like he did in chapter 215. We were told when Sukuna attempts to hurt his friends, his output was dropping and fluctuating to 10%. However, Sukuna, even after the Kodaku ritual, is using Megami as a meat shield since if he dies, Megami does as well, which makes it necessary to separate their souls. With this knowledge, Yuji's new power is capable of also decreasing Sukuna's curse energy and maintaining his current form. This comes back to the idea that the soul is the body 
and the body is the soul. They can only exist in harmony, which is why the most stable forms of reincarnation have either been in vessels whose souls died, such as Kenjaku's forms, or where the vessel is in a symbiotic relationship with the host, like Angel and Hana. This implies the sync between body and soul is vital to maintaining Sukuna's Heian era form. Once disturbed, it will instantly cause a major disharmony where he will get evicted. However, the barrage of attacks continued with Rika launching Yuji like a freaking missile. I mean, <laughs> just look at the battle. Oh my, it's too funny. I can't help but laugh. The amount of dedication Yuji has is unmatched. He's literally doing a suicidal kamikaze ass attack, bruh. But speaking of Kamikaze, those with the notification bell on have watched my other video about the entire story towards Yuji's death with Sukuna. So make sure to hit the bell and don't miss out, you freaking silly willies. Now, despite Sukuna saving himself from Yuta's sword, Yuji's kick shakes his core once again. This is poetic justice for the free verse one against Gojo, baby. And I'm enjoying every moment of it. But you know who isn't? Sukuna. No, wait. Loves it. He's he, he's actually having fun. What the f now? I'm really mad. Now, unlike Gojo, who's at his peak when he's fighting alone, Yuji is actually at his best when he's fighting with others, as he has done so multiple times. He's almost about to die, but Yuta uses Unamaki's curse technique to order Sukuna not to move and hit him with the thin icebreaker yet again. Without wasting any time, Jump Kaizen round two begins as Rika immediately punches and throws Sukuna away whilst our protagonists rush over to beat him up. However, the counter attack begins with Sukuna sending slashes towards Yuta and Yuji. Things get interesting as Sukuna has to confess that in order to deal a fatal blow, he actually needs to have contact with them. This is huge because Sukuna's slashes are so powerful that he has always stood on the side with his hands in his pocket, putting zero effort into massacring anyone and anything. But he himself gives the reason for this. It's not just his lowered curse energy output from Gojo's fight. It's also the fact that Yuta and Yuji have reached the next level of defensive capabilities. They've had a power up. My God, okay, it's happening. Rewind back to chapter 214. Yuji tanked point blank slashes from Sukuna but healed almost instantly, which were around 10 to 15% of his power. However, now they are capable of taking on 50%, demonstrating a huge difference. Sukuna compares their durability to Ryu. He was a reincarnated sorcerer from 400 years ago, who was said to have the highest output of cursed energy. So now we got to put some respect on Uru and Ryu's names. Not only is Yuta using sky manipulation that helped land huge blows, but Ryu proves that Sukuna needed to touch him to kill, which means Yuta and Yuji can't be one-shotted like flies. But this brings up a huge question that I'm about to answer. Yuta's barrier techniques limit the short hit effect only to Sukuna. This is epic because not even Satoru freaking Gojo could restrict the power of his domain to specific targets and needed to touch people in order to save them from the information overload. Remember, with Jogo, he made sure to touch Yuji, which let Sukuna have this crucial information from his memories to take advantage of this flaw in their fight. Like, imagine in Shibuya, if Gojo was capable of doing what Yuta has performed, all the disaster curses would only be targeted, and the entire scenario of being sealed wouldn't even have occurred. This level of skill makes Sukuna ask the same question. How the hell did these guys get so strong in only a month? Both of them reply at the same time, with Yuji bringing up hard work, whilst Yuta's like, this genie, this genie. 
So what does Yuta mean by cheating to become insanely more powerful? Well, as you know, I have a degree in anime bullshit science, allowing me to figure out the answer. An immediate thought would be the prison realm, right? As Hakairi mentioned, it can be used for time travel as the flow of it is completely different inside. However, this can't be possible due to Angel's technique destroying it in chapter 221, as Yuji pointed out. This leads to the second option, which would be the sumo domain showcased in chapter 196. Time flows faster in it, in which Maki did 1000 bouts in less than a minute. Once she had unlocked her true power, when released, the same question Sukuna is asking was presented. By chapter 197, she totally changed. She suddenly grew in such a short span of time. As a result, the squad could have used this domain to train 1000 times more in the month, as these guys survived with Maki killing Naoya due to becoming like Toji. The third cheat they used would be Yuji's soul swap ability as I'll now give evidence that my man has simple domain. What did he say? Hey. From chapter 248, we know that even Sukuna coexisting with Yuji meant that he realized ideals can be true due to the experience he gained. And in chapter 212, we learn the knowledge of the brain transfers into the vessel. This would explain how Yuji learned reverse curse techniques so fast, as Shoko would be the perfect candidate it to take the muscle memory from. Now during chapter 226, Yuji witnessed Gojo activate simple domain, where he claims his sensei didn't know how to do that, whereas Kusakabe corrects him in stating he couldn't teach it and is a terrible teacher. But the funny thing is, Kusakabe is one himself and linking this to chapter 222 where his soul has been swapped with Yuji, I think he's talking about mastering simple domain. As Yuji would be picking up all kinds of powers to master for the fight against Sukuna, weighing up all their strategies and options. For example, we clearly know he was practicing blood manipulation from Chosso and Kamo. RCT would be Shoko and Simple Domain would be Kusakabe. Yuta on the other hand would be going to every other sorcerer to take their techniques and refining his domain expansion to only target a certain person. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and i'd appreciate a like on the video as we dive back into yuta and yuji admitting the importance of gojo's impact according to them they needed sukuna's curse energy to be worn down by gojo first or his firepower would have killed them both without leaving them any chance even to use their own rct yuji is scared of the outcome if they don't finish everything right now because they're fighting the strongest sorcerer in history. But this is where our go Yuta comes in because he uses another insane copy technique, the ability to see into the future. Bro, I don't remember that. Where did that come from? Well, it belongs to this wannabe manga called Charles who fought or should I say, got destroyed by Hakairi. His curse technique was actually hacks because it allows Charles to look into his targets very near future, starting with one second. This is how Yuta could see Sukuna's next move and quickly evade them to kick him in the face. So this is clear proof that the squad went around other culling game players, including the sumo guys to gain even more power. As it ties in with chapter 190, when and Hakairi goes back to see Charles after the Kashimo fight. Hakairi tells him not to worry like an established manga creator and to continue drawing like his life depends on it because what do you know? The culling game will be over soon. And as we all know, it can only be over if Sukuna and Kenjaku die. Therefore, Charles would help Yuta and the gang. The endless number of techniques currently is Angel's Jacob's Ladder, Uru's Sky Manipulation, Drop Shikigami, Unomaki's Cursed Speech, Charles' Future Sight. So with Sukuna's only option being a weak shrine, Yuta theorizes that the best way to dominate this fight is to use a technique he's not seen yet. Meanwhile, Sukuna is thinking something else entirely as he wonders 
just like our community, whether Yuta copied Gojo's infinity. But like Gege confirmed in an interview, Yuta cannot use a sophisticated technique like infinity because it can only be controlled using six eyes. However, what we do witness is Sukuna's cleave being copied. Yuta suddenly picks up a katana and realizes it's the one he needs. He most likely achieved it because Yuji is a cursed object soaked in Sukuna's cursed energy, therefore fulfilling the conditions to take it for himself. This leads to a moment we've all been waiting for. Let's go! That's what I'm talking about fam. Yuta uses the word Hachi, which means cleave. So even though Sukuna stops his sword with a single hand, he is absolutely shocked at being cut up by his own fangs. But this also opens the doors for other powers, like Kodo's Boogie Woogie to Nobara's Resonance. Nobara is the biggest Chekhov's gun in the series right now, as it also follows their plan to attack Sukuna's soul, with Maki's katana also being capable of doing that. However, since we know Jujutsu Kaisen ain't gonna have a happy ending, watch this video discussing Yuji's death at the end of the series.